Okay, so let's continue. Let's continue in the miracle mind. So we we have today, say, the last episode of the miracle mind in this section, in this part of the book, uh, of this book, of the introducing A Course in Miracles. And um, so this is still related to the scripture of resurrected man and um actually it's it's yeah wherever we step into it it's it's a great chapter and when we continue it's a great yeah great chapters coming up so that's what we're going to do with with the continuation with can you hear this so now today we um use the manual for teachers um, going through the last two uh, characteristics of God's teachers and uh, taking a look at that. We listen to Master Teacher um, actually say half an hour or so of the um, of the video that yeah well that's not well, wait a minute maybe that's not a good idea anyway um, i'm going to share this with you there was a spontaneous idea coming in but there's no french translation so i, I will not do that um, so we will just listen to part of the tape that we uh, have been listening to um, so which is great it doesn't matter so it's reorganizing can you tell I'm in a transition right now. Are you? Oh, that's so great. So I'm really happy with this beautiful lesson today. Uh, so I'm I'm the light of the world. It's like that's my only function. I have not another function. I can come up with ideas of what I think I should do and what I think that needs to happen and all of this. But in the meantime, I'm just the light of the world. It's like either I shine my light into this world or I'm nothing. So whatever I do, it's not that that whatever I do is what I am. No, I'm the light of the world with no exception. Wherever I am, in whatever situation I am. But it has nothing to do with my ideas about being the light of the world. So that's that's why you put, say, your ego thoughts in the right positions. Like, no, no, no. No, no, it's not what you think it is. You go sit there. You go sit there and relax. Like, no, no, no. There's no interf interference with ego thoughts, you could say, with um, an idea of temporal self-identity, thinking that you can become the light of the world as an iconic figure in space and time, um, extending this message and having lots of followers or whatever. It's like, oh God, no, 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 no. No, it has nothing to do with your thoughts about that. It's like I'm okay. I'm the light of the world. Just that's my own. That's my secret. That's my sacred secret. Like I'm the light of the world. Wow, um, and that's my only function. That's the only thing I have to do. I have, but it's like it's the only thing I really truly am. In this temporal, uh, say, setup in which I find myself, I play a role. I play a function. I have a function to fulfill. What does the light of the world do? Well, we see that tomorrow. What the light of the world does is forgive is not defending itself, is not attacking, is not, no, it's completely focused on peace of mind. It, it, is, it is really like, fits so well in with the characteristics of God's teachers, of course, uh, because everything of that comes back, it's like trust, the basis of my connection with my place that I find myself in this moment is trust, not not paranoia, trust. Not defending yourself, no, trust. You know, so all, all the characteristics of the teacher of God are, are based on this idea, trust, trust. And trust is not unrest, no, trust is trust, trust is peace of mind. And so then other characteristics will come up, like joy, it's inevitable. Um, patience, generosity, 
Who am I giving to? To myself. I'm extending ideas of loveliness, of wholeness, of happiness. And the only function I have is shining light. So I do this. Like I do this when I recognize my own function, when there's no disturbance, when I have cleaned my mirror, you could say, I can reflect the light of God into this world. When my mirror is clean, if there's all kinds of stuff on, on the mirror, you could say, then the light cannot be reflected well, because this is what I do. I'm the light of the world. Like I reflect, literally, the light from above into this world, as if, if I keep a mirror here, like, wing, and shine the light just straight into my world. But this mirror needs to be clean, otherwise you cannot see the light of the world. You cannot see the light of heaven shining into this world. Because So then here's another thing. Faithfulness. One of the characteristics. The extent of the teacher of God's faithfulness is the measure of his advancement in the curriculum. Does he still select some aspects of his life to bring to his learning while keeping others apart? If so, his advancement is limited and his trust not yet firmly established. So that's a very important sentence. The extent of the teacher of God's faithfulness is the measure of his advancement in the curriculum. So here we go. Here we go. This is the important sentence. Does he still select some aspects of his life to bring to his learning while keeping others apart? Are you still selecting some aspects of your life to bring to this learning while keeping others apart? So this is like, you could say this is the pivot point of your awakening. Like here's the real transformative um, barrier, you could say, or possibility for change. Do you still select some aspects of your life to bring to this, this learning while keeping others apart? If that is the case, and it is the case, as long as you're not like in full trust or fully certain of what this message is, then you're still keeping some aspects apart. And that's not a judgment, it's not that you have to judge yourself for it. No, it's, it's states of, yeah, it states and temporal um, symptom, you could say. It's like, are you still selecting some aspects of your life to bring to this learning while keeping others apart? If so, his advancement is limited and his trust not yet firmly established. Faithfulness is the teacher of God's trust in the word of God to set all things right. To set all things right. Not some, but all. Generally, his faithfulness begins by resting on just some problems, remaining carefully limited for a while. Oh, wow. Generally, his faithfulness begins by resting on just some problems, remaining carefully limited for a time. To give up all problems to one answer is to reverse the thinking of the world entirely. Well, that's another great sentence. To give up all problems to one answer is to reverse the thinking of the world entirely and that alone is faithfulness nothing but that really deserves the name yet each degree how small is worth achieving readiness as the next notes is not mastery True faithfulness, however, does not deviate. Brings consistent, being consistent is wholly honest. We saw that before. What you say, what you think, and what you do are one thing. Being consistent is, the, is wholly honest. Being unswerving is full of trust. Being based on fearlessness 
it is gentle. Being joy certain, sorry, being certain, it is joyous. Being confident, it is tolerant. Oh, I love this. I do this again. Truth, faithfulness, however, does not deviate. Being consistent, it is wholly honest. Being unswerving, it is full of trust. Being based on fearlessness, it is gentle. Being certain, it is joyous. And being confident, it is tolerant. So defenselessness attends it naturally. And joy is its condition. Faithfulness then combines in itself the other attributes of God's teachers. It implies acceptance of the word of God and his definition of his son. It is to them that faithfulness in the true sense is always directed. Toward them it looks, seeking until it finds, and having found it rests quietly in quiet certainty that, uh, that alone to which all faithless faith fullness is due <laughs> well so defenselessness attends it naturally and joys its condition faithfulness then combines in itself the other attributes of god's teachers it's all based on this to give up all problems to one answer is to reverse the thinking of the world, and that alone is faithfulness. Faithfulness then combines in itself the other attributes of God's teachers. It implies the acceptance of the word of God and his definition of his son. Like it's a complete self-acceptance, you could say. That's beautiful. So now we head over to open-mindedness. Okay, open-mindedness. The centrality of open-mindedness, perhaps the last of the attributes the teacher of God acquires, is easily understood when its relation to forgiveness is recognized. Ah, now I'm curious, what is he, what is he going to tell us here? Open-mindedness comes with lack of judgment. As judgment shuts the mind against God's teacher, so open-mindedness invites him to come in. As condemnation judges the Son of God as evil, so open-mindedness permits him to judge by the voice of God on his behalf. As the projection of guilt upon him would send him to hell, so open-mindedness lets Christ's image be projected on him. Only the open-minded can be at peace, for they alone see reason for it. They see a reason for peace. How do the open-minded forgive? They have to let go all things that would prevent forgiveness. They have in truth abandoned the world and let it be restored to them in newness and in joy so glorious they could never have conceived of such a change. Nothing is now as it was formerly, nothing but sparks, sparkles now which seemed so dull and lifeless before. And above all are all things welcoming for threat has gone. No clouds remain to hide the face of Christ. Now is the goal achieved. Forgiveness is the final goal of the curriculum. It paves the way for what goes far beyond all learning. The curriculum makes no effort to exceed its legitimate goal. Forgiveness is its single aim at which all learning ultimately converges. It is indeed enough. So here's our function. You know, forgiveness is my function as the light of the world. And that will be tomorrow. It is the final goal of the curriculum. It paves the way for what goes far beyond all learning. The curriculum makes no effort to exceed its legitimate goal. Forgiveness is its aim at which all learning ultimately converges. 
it is indeed enough. You may have noticed that the list of attributes of God's teachers does not include those things which are the Son of God's inheritance. Terms like love, sinlessness, perfection, knowledge, and eternal truth do not appear in this context. They would be most inappropriate here. What God has given is so far beyond our curriculum that learning but disappears in its presence. What God has given is so far beyond our curriculum that learning but disappears in its presence. So it's like learning goes just that far. It is not the end though. No, it's the the goal of when you achieve the goal of the curriculum in fact learning stops it's at the end of learning but at the same time it's the beginning of something that is beyond words it is beyond learning it is like if you would see a little bit of that all learning would disappear in its presence Yet while its presence is obscured, the focus properly belongs on the curriculum. So we are not going to dive too deep in terms like love, sinlessness, perfection, knowledge. Now there's some work to be done. That's why this is a course in miracles. The miracle is really the work that needs to be done in recognizing and learning and say being consistent in your learning in uh, say all the characteristics that we have seen passing by are actually becoming part of you in your conscious recognition of it and in your daily practice of it it is the function of god's teachers to bring true learning to the world properly speaking it is unlearning that they bring for that is true learning in the world it is given to the teachers of God to bring glad tidings of complete forgiveness to the world. Blessed indeed are they, for they are the bringers of salvation. So it's like that is, it is given to the teachers of God to bring glad tidings. So it's like here's your possibility. It's not that anything is going to be taken away from you or that you're not able to do any of this. No, this basically is a curriculum based on your willingness to allow a change to occur to allow what is real to come fully in your awareness so that we can start in fact so this is all preparation that we do a course in miracles is a preparation to come to the point where you forgive truly in every step with no exceptions recognizing that yeah the love of god can be present in you in your consciousness because there's nothing in the way anymore so there's some work to do let's start with trust <laughs> let's start with trust so if you fully trust we, we said this too in the beginning like this is the foundation on which their ability to fulfill their function rests you know that's the fun foundation foundation Perception is the result of learning. In fact, perception is learning because cause and effect are never separate. The teacher of God have trust in the world because they have learned it is not governed by the laws the world made up. Well, now this is, say, the start of the characteristics. Like this is really where we start our, um, our practice in our uh, and our journey you could say like it's all based on trust but trust is then you're in the world you recognize the world for what it is and you you're not you see say you start to come into like true perception in the sense that you see that the laws of the world are not the laws that are actually uh, functioning so if you accomplish that you could say if you com accomplish that in your awareness man that's great that's great that's that's quite the step isn't it so let's stay with that practice first before we move on to love knowledge and holiness and woo 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 like 
<laughs> that's all great all great and good let's first clean out let's first clean out any kind of um, exception that you walk around with of any kind of part of your learning that you still keep for yourself and not uh, integrate in this incredible possibility for healing there might be still little parts that you keep for yourself and not say allow the healing to occur so this this is all in fact very um, concrete this is very much um, practical uh, what we're talking about so this is what I love about the miracle mind meetings and that we look at it in a very practical way like what are we dealing with and what does it actually mean it's like okay we've heard this but what does it actually mean how does that function in my daily life how am i supposed to deal with with the things that are coming to me or when i catch myself being completely say taken by the laws of the world thinking that there's a real consequence in it that it actually is affecting me like that's that's good practice to to come back to the undoing of that to the forgiveness of that for yourself like not for anyone else just for yourself so i'm the light of the world that's that's my function so what does that mean then to uh, to be willing to learn the lessons that you need to learn you could say the lessons that i need to learn to see that um, only my yeah only my peace of mind is real every disturbance is is an invitation to let go any kind of disturbance that i'm perceiving is not true perception so i have to let it go i let it i let it i hand it over for healing now you don't want to come into the cycle of um, it's like doing this all conceptually so and what I mean to say with that is, is this is like take sufficient time to let these sentences as we just went through them for instance as we just went through them you see they're actually talking to you now let yourself be affected by what they are saying and stay with that for a moment you know allow allow that change to occur in you but it can only occur if the feeling that you have say with the idea if you allow that to to open up in you it's like really like like an opening of a flower you could say it's like let that happen so you get the full blast the full frequency of what it actually tells you as an experience for yourself see that is what is doing it yeah. talk of master teacher we're in transformation of body mind so i'm using this to continue my expression related to uh, say all the characteristics that are part of you that you have to start to recognize as being part of you as a preparation to come to full forgiveness to open up for what is ready for you to be say explored after you end your uh, say process of learning so we were talking yesterday about what a savior does all the savior really does is give you an abstract association with yourself you are the one that demands judgment through your own perceptual associations when you release that you go to light automatically don't you you become one-eyed don't you this is the holy spirit the anya aina chakra the awakening of that light in you so that fits perfectly in with the lesson of today so all a savior really does is give you an abstract association with yourself now what is an abstract association well light is abstract you know light is is, is abstract so that can come to you and you can share it you can bring it into this world you are the one that demands judgment through your own perceptual associations but it's like when you give up when you forgive 
your own judgments, when you let go of your ideas about what everything is for, or how the world looks, and what your ideas are about that, if you release that, something happens to you. You, you enter into open-mindedness, you could say, like you enter into having your, um, your uh, consciousness open, receptive, and what happens automatically? Light comes into your mind. If that does not happen, you probably don't have forgiven it. You don't have completely released it. So you're holding on to it, is what I'm saying. So this is a subtle balance you will discover in yourself. It's like the experience is the confirmation of the actual occurrence. You cannot release without having an experience of light coming to you. No, then you have still hold on to it. When there's a release, yes, there, there's the openness, there's the light. Simple as that. But to be honest about it is, is everything. And here's where you only meet yourself. <laughs> You become one-eyed. When it happens, you become one-eyed. This is the Holy Spirit, the Aina Chakra, the awakening of that light in you. If your eye offends you, like if what you see stirs up in you the, the energy of attack, of judgment, of who knows what temptation or whatever, pluck it out. It's like, allow the release to take place. Allow to release your idea about it. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. I like to use Jesus to do this because he was right on the mark. He taught this directly to your own individual. Know ye, uh, know ye not, ye must be born again. Jesus Christ is whole teaching is nothing but the transformation of body mind and he proves it all by it dramatically so if your eye is single now if your eye offends you sorry if your eye offends you pluck it out don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing say don't acknowledge your doings as being something don't take credit for what you do don't don't do that see i like to use jesus to do this because he was right on the mark he taught this directly to your own individual know ye not ye must be born again so this is the release that we were talking to on the on the previous page it's like it is See, it is the release that has to take place, the release of your judgment, of your ideas about what should happen and what is necessary and how the situation is in the first place. The release of that is, is your death, you could say. Is you, you know, know you not that you must be born again. This is your rebirth, you could say. And to you, since you invested so deeply into say, ego mind or in, into your um, self-created image, you invested so much in it that if you release that, you think you're dying. That's how much you were identified with it. And that's actually funny, isn't it? It's like you invest in an image of yourself that you are not and that you have defended sufficiently and you let your whole world tell you who you are, you could say, like it's confirmed in all kinds of ways, in, in school grades, in parents, and who knows what, like it's all confirming your self-created image, because you literally have used your world for that. You let the whole world tell you who you are, you ask it to. You gave them the role you gave the world the role of teaching you who you think you are. Ah, that's, that's pretty funny, actually. So now the other thing is happening. You release your ideas about this world. You release 
uh, your ideas about who you think you are or what God is or what is happening in the first place or how you look at the world. You release the idea that others can tell you who you are. You're like, that's impossible. I am as God created me, but I'm not what the world tells me that I am. I'm, I'm not. So not to use that against the world, no. I'm acknowledging that this world cannot even say anything to me because the source is within me, it's not anywhere else. That makes it easier to release it. Now, like I said, this self-image, which is confirmed to me in my consciousness by the world, I have identified it with it big time. Now, in the release of that, like I said, in the release of that, I think I'm dying if I let go of that self-image because it's all I have as a description of myself. So I, it feels like a death. I need to be born again. Like this character with this name in this situation, with these relationships, with this world, with all of it and all the confirmation you got from it is a misidentification and nothing else. Now here is your possibility for a release that will feel like death to you, but it is actually a rebirth into, say, from death to life. And life is different than death. <laughs> so it's, it's great. So I hope you hear this, what I'm saying. It's really f fun to see that. So you release it. Light comes into your, into your mind, into your consciousness. Light comes into your consciousness. Starts to radiate through you into this world. Great. And so what is the world going to do with that? Who cares what the world is going to do with that? You shine your light into it. That was the only requirement. The world is not going to tell you anything anymore because what is the world? What I made of it. So now I don't need to be concerned with that anymore. So what are the reflections that are coming back to me? First, it might be a bit disruptive, a bit like different, but suddenly you get the confirmation of your own loveliness. You start to see in everyone your dearest friend. You, you get excited about occurrences that didn't seem to have any meaning before. Suddenly you watch a flower, say, pop out the ground and you've never seen anything that beautiful. Or you hear music and get so touched by it just in a blink of a second. And because of your openness, you could say your open mindedness, because the fact that you don't let the world tell you who you are anymore, but you see a, literally a reflection of the light that you're shining into this world, you see that this is really like heaven on earth. That could be nothing that that con yeah that disturbs your peace of mind. When you come from your say your extension into this world, so that's really the practice. That's really what we're doing uh, in the sense of first allowing this change to occur, first allowing the release to take place. Well, however that is possible, like. It's not difficult. It, it's a bit like get over yourself. <laughs> get, just get over yourself. That image that you're defending, that you have been defending so badly, didn't give you what you wanted. And that's why you're frustrated. That's okay. Now release it. And you actually enter into the happiness that you were looking for. Or you were say so infested into pain or into lack or into limitation you were so deeply invested to it thinking that such a thing is possible and that that is you now in the release of that wow finally it's like the abundance can come to you not that your bank account is full of money suddenly or something like this no 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 you are you get the say the total abundance 
of what is given to you in terms of happiness, of peace, of the quietness, of yeah, of fulfillment. You get a sense of fulfillment that is not of this world. You could never find it. Now what do you care about any of the differences that you perceived before? It doesn't matter any longer. Now this is really like the forgiveness that we're talking about. So when this all happens, you see this in the in the manual for teachers too. When you the characteristics when you look at the characteristics come to the end, you see open mindedness. When you realize this when you start to recognize that this is taking place in you, you come to an, a beautiful place inside yourself, that is the place where it all begins. It is not the end of it. No, there's much more. But there's no learning connected to it anymore. There's no change in that sense connected to anymore. There's no release necessary when you are in that spot, you could say, like everything opens up by itself from then on. So that's why we are say, not so much concerned with that, with deep experiences of love, of extension, of all of that. It's like, no, 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 we're doing the groundwork here. We're performing miracles, miracles being like new thoughts that are coming in, new ideas that are coming to us how to do this, uh, giving ourselves like a collapse of time, shifting into invisibility for just a moment, just because we forgive, we forgive our idea about ourselves, like forgiving yourself, being this separate entity, walking around on a planet. Jesus Christ's whole teaching is nothing but a transformation of body mind, and he proves it rather dramatically <laughs> Jesus <laughs> excuse me he says that in the course oh he says that in the course I proved it in a very dramatic fashion that there is no death not that you die somehow no there is no death that's what you have discovered and Jesus did it was the example of that. He was the example of that there's no such thing as death. So what happens when you die? No, you, there is no such thing as death. Forget it. There is no such thing as death. And Jesus showed that in a very dramatic fashion. Can you be a part of this circle of atonement? This reordering of celestial thought, as Jesus puts it so beautifully? reordering of celestial thought is it really me that is going to do this or is it somebody else do i have to wait for the savior to come how can he come if i judge him he must be a projection of my own mind how can a second coming be accomplished if he is outside of me need i see him perfectly to be saved? Of course. Who is your savior then? He is sitting next to you. Where did you think he was? Could he be anywhere but here next to you? Does that require your relinquishment of your judgment? That's what I've been telling you. So it's literally true. It's like the one that is sitting next to you. It's like it's your neighbor. Your neighbor sitting next to you, the one that is sit sitting next to you, if you forgive him truly, you see the Christ in him. He's coming to you. He's not outside of you. It's your recognition. When you recognize the Christ in him, you recognize it in yourself. And how many are there then? There's only one then. Are you determined to continue to judge each other and die together? Yes. Can you do that? Of course. Have you always done that? Certainly. You can't remember heaven. I'm here to remind you that it is very beautiful and very happy and very perfect. And you know it because we are there together. That's where we are. 
So the relinquishment of judgment is what this is about. And it's like the relinquishment of judgment is is all that is necessary. And, and which is my function. You know, my function is forgiveness. We see that tomorrow. It's like my function is forgiveness. So if I allow you to to if I allow myself to see you as the Christ, not as a new image, no, as a real discovery of my connectedness with you and my full communication with you, say the second coming takes place. It takes place in me because I'm recognizing you as my savior. I'm recognizing that we are one, that we are whole and perfect. We remember home together. Like it is not a... Heaven is not a place where you enter in alone. No, you always take your neighbor with you. Like if if there's still somebody that isn't perfect staying outside, what you think, you're not in heaven. So it's like, no, you take your brother with you. This is why, why we meet like this. It's like, no, I'm patiently waiting with you to the moment that we actually start to recognize each other as one. If that occurs, we're in heaven. So, but that is the portal. So that is, that is like the ultimate forgiveness, you could say. See, all of this, this whole curriculum that we're going through with A Course in Miracles is really all about that. It's like coming to the realization step by step, slowly but certainly, like a perfect plan has been made for it. Slowly but certainly you come into the recognition that you're one with your brother. If that is the case, then whammo. Like there's light in your consciousness, there's recognition, there's peace. You recognize yourself as being one with your brother, having the same characteristics, like worth your full trust to start with. I trust my brother who is one with me. Lesson 181. I trust my brother who is one with me. That's that's the occasion. So all of these lessons, like 365 lessons for every day one, to recognize that your brother is one with you, and that is a prerequisite to enter into heaven. It's like I'm holding your hand. We do this together. You're a whole part of me. I'm a whole part of you. If we can accept that, if we can come to an agreement about that, we find ourselves not here. We find ourselves not in a place of limitation. No, it is the recognition of our totality. And that's the end of learning, so that's great. But we're not there yet, are we? Oh yeah, we are there, or not? Sometimes we are, sometimes we are not. Oh yes, is that really true? So what is the exception? When you doubt about it? Ah, why are you doubting about it? Are you not fully trusting it? Oh, see, there you go. <laughs> That's funny. That's great. Um, so what, do we have any time left? Well, a little bit. Maybe we're just playing some music then. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for being in this part one, uh, Miracle Mind, uh, with the book, Introducing A Course in Miracles. What is A Course in Miracles really? Well, we have an answer to that, don't we? But we're continuing with recognizing there's something to hear for us. There's something to hear that will bring us even quicker back to where we truly belong. So that's what we don't want to miss. So this continues in, in the next, say, series of, can you hear this? Listen, can you hear this? Can you hear what is actually being said? And when I say hear it, it is like with your whole being, with your whole, with every aspect of you, with every cell of your body. Can you hear this? If, you, if that is so, your release will be total. The release of your misidentification will be complete. What happens then? Well, that's the end of learning. It is entering into a place where you truly are.
that is all and that's everything thank you so much i'm seeing you soon and thank you for everything